Okay, this is probably uh, maybe a little more intuitive than this one. Now, here's, here's the formal definition. Okay, so uh, for all or for every uh, element of B, right? so you've only got two of them, right? uh, little b, you know, th this element, has uh, at least Right. Yeah. At least one element belonging to A that uh, that maps to it. Oh. So so every every dot here, every member of your target set B is mapped to. Every dot has an arrow. At least one. Might have two. Like this this element here has two arrows that map to it. Okay. But at least every every dot here gets mapped to. Now, to give you a counterexample, have, have a look at this set. This, this member here is not mapped to. Okay? This, this one here. Therefore, this mapping that maps that one to that, and that to that, and that to that, this mapping here is not subjective. Okay? Why? Well, because not, it's not the case that uh, every member gets mapped to. This one did not get mapped to. It's like a straggler, didn't disconnect it, right? So, so this function here is not subjective, or another way of saying the same thing, it is not onto. It's not an onto mapping, okay? All right, now bijection, uh, or bijective, a bijective function, uh, by definition, is just a function that is both, both injective and subjective, okay? It's both. Now, in practice, if you, if you think of it, or give it a bit of thought, a bijective function maps one to one, like this. Okay? If, if it's going to satisfy this property and this property, so you're, you're playing, playing with the concept, and you'll come out with the conclusion that uh, a bijective mapping is effectively one to one, one to one. So there's one here maps to one here, and so on. Okay. So uh, if you see the word bijective, just think one to one. Right? Uh, if, like, like bijective means it's surjective. So every element here has an arrow to it, right? At least one. It might have two if it's if it's uh, surjective. But injective means um, at most one, right? So if it's Subjective, uh, every element's mapped to, and because it's also also injective, it means the number of arrows here cannot be more than one. So, so, <laughs> so, that, so that means each one gets just has one arrow. If if you put these two together, it means that each element here in your codomain, your target set, uh, has only one and only one, right? one and only one arrow. It's mapped to uh, just once for, for each member of, of your B, of your codomain, your target set. Okay? All right? Uh, now, uh, a couple of examples, well, one at least. Uh, have a look at this function. It, it's taking, let's, let's assume these are integers. Okay? Now, I haven't, I haven't put the f colon z to z. So understood. Okay. So you're mapping an integer into this integer, and the formula, if you like, the the mapping, the function, uh, takes the integer and just adds one to it. And so you could look on this uh, function as like an incrementer, you know, which means add one to. Right? Uh, now uh, I'll just throw it at you, but this function here is an example of a bijection. It is bijective. Right? Now, in the problem-solving part, um, I'll do lots of examples, and uh, so you get a I get a feel for why that's the case. I'm just giving you a taste, sort of what's coming. All right. Now, uh, say you say you're given so, sort of moving on a little bit now. Say you you're given a candidate function, and you're asked uh, to find its nature. In other words, you know what what type of function. Firstly. Is it defined? It may not even be defined. Like, like here, if n is zero, this function here is not even defined. So that's the first thing. Is it defined? Does it make sense? 
And if it is defined, uh, which of these three types is it, is, is it, is it a, an injective function? Is it a surjective function? And if so, if it's both, then by definition, it's a by, you know, by two, two conditions satisfied. It's a bijective function. Or to use the alternative uh, terminology, is that function uh, an into, I N, into function? Is it an onto, O N, onto function? And if so, if it's both, both, then that, uh, that function, F, is a one to one function. It's like this. Okay. All right. Uh, so, so you're given, you're given these candidate functions. You know, you, you, you're told, you're given something like, something like this. Um, so you're told what the domain is. You're told what the co-domain is. These two sets, right? So, for example, a set of integers, a set of integers, whatever. And you're given some, usually, you know, a formula, a, a function for your f. And you, you, you're usually asked, uh, this f, is it, you know, which of, which of these three uh, is it? What kind of function is it? It's type, if you like. So, uh, so how do you actually go about proving, for example, that a, a function, a candidate function, is injective? How do you, how would you do that? Uh, all right, well, let's talk about that, and then I'll talk about uh, how do you prove that something's subjective or onto, and how do you disprove that something is subjective, or how do you disprove something is onto. Okay? So remember, remember these two terminologies. Uh, they're, they're, both are used heavily uh, in you know, higher maths, so you need to know both. All right? Uh, so how do you prove that a function is injective? Okay, so, uh, well, I've written it down here. So, take, take any two, you know, random two elements of your domain here, let's say. Okay? And it, let that be little a, let that be little b. So, this point here is your image, right? It's your image of this, and this point here would be the image of that, okay? So, uh, so if that's a little a, that's a little b, um, so f, where is it? Here. So, oh, that's confusing. Oh, no. <laughs> Alright, I'll call, I'll call that little a, and this is b, okay? And I'll call that little c, and this is little d. So, in the case, uh, I've got to change this. I'll make that a C. Okay. And I'll make, I'll make this a C. Alright, <coughs> right. so, uh, so how to prove uh, that a function is injective? How, how do you prove an, an injection? An injection is just a type of function. So you have three types of function. An injection, a surjection, and a bijection. They're just names of functions. <coughs> or type of function. <coughs> okay, so uh, little a maps to little b. Little c maps to little d. Now, uh, if it's an injection, you, you cannot have two arrows coming to one member of B. Right? That's the definition. You cannot have two arrows. You cannot have, like like here you do have, you cannot have like two to one or many to one. Okay? So so if if you think like like you have two two possible like if you have the image here and the image here, so let's say F of so B B would be F of A and D would be F of C. So assume assume these two images are equal, right? So we 
So if, if you have two images that are the same, so B and D, so and what is B? It should also be a C. So if uh, these these two images are in fact the same, so B and this is B and this is D, which is f of A and f of C. Right? These two are the images of these two. Now if these two are the same, if it's an injection, if it's an injective function, then in fact A and C should be equal, right? Because you, you, they can't be different. Because if they are different, then if you're mapping if, if uh, f of A and f of C are the same, right, they're the same uh, member, at the same point, like if, if this is true, so if, if it is an injection, this point and this point must be the same. So that's, that's your, so if you, if you can show that, that's your way of proving that your mapping, your, your f, is in fact injective. So here's, here's Here's the criteria. Here's, here's your general method to prove that a mapping, your, your function f, is injective. And you do it this way. So uh, you take two arbitrary uh, points in your domain, let's say a and c. Right? You assume uh, that these two...